the next presentation, um, which is a quite short slot, um, so I don't want to lose any time. Um, today uh, we have here Christian Schamüller. Um, he has been working for Smarter E-Commerce, or the short version SMEC, um, since 2010. Um, as a head of sales, he's in contact with key accounts from all over the world, and before joining Smarter E-Commerce, uh, Christian studied finance and marketing um, and worked um, in sales and marketing for well-known uh, companies and brands like Red Bull and Premier Marketing. Today, um, he will present us uh, e-commerce benchmarks and best practices from 500 plus Google Ads accounts. And he wants to answer a lot of questions. Uh, some, some questions like, uh, does it still make sense to invest in tax ads at all? or uh, which synergies between shopping and search are interesting for PPC managers. So, please welcome Christian Schammeler. What, a, what an intro, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, just out of curiosity, I start with a very important question, at least for myself. Uh, how many native English speakers are here in the room? Damn! <laughs> it's always pressure on my English skills, but I will try my best anyway. Okay, guys, uh, I will tr really try my best. Okay, um, let's uh, jump into the presentation right away. Uh, since the time is really tight, um, let's get serious. Uh, welcome to my session, Benchmark and Best Practices, um, insights from 500 plus Google Ads accounts. Um, before we jump directly into the content, um, a short introduction about myself. Um, my name is Christian, I'm working for Smart E-Commerce, now the 10th year. Um, and the company I'm working for, maybe it's interesting for you where we get the data from, is Smart E-Commerce. Uh, we are located in Austria, uh, which you might not hear right now because I'm talking in English. If I switch to German, it would be more obvious. Um, we are uh, located in Austria, we are specializing on Google Shopping and Google Search. And for both channels, we developed uh, software tools which we are providing as a software, as a service, and as an agency. That's what we are about. Um, and today I want to dig into some numbers, um, which was quite a challenge, to be honest. And uh, the most important thing I want to provide today is, first of all, I really want to provide benchmarks for all of you guys. I guess most of you are retailers, most of you are doing Google search and Google shopping at the same time. And I want ju just want to give you benchmarks out of 500 accounts to give you kind of a comparison where I am at um, and uh, just to give you insights what we're, what we're experiencing on a daily basis. And the second thing, this is kind of a disclaimer, uh, the numbers do not really care if they fit the storyline because I have a storyline in my head and some numbers are completely disrupting it but the numbers don't care, that's a good thing and I was not confident enough to fake them. So uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next 20 minutes um, and I want to start with the first question which is I think for a lot of retailers, a very obvious one and a very challenging one. Google search versus Google shopping. And I want to start with uh, one slide. This is a snapshot of the Merkle report um, where they did a year over year analysis of the growth of Google shopping and Google search. And what's quite obvious here, guys, is that Google shopping is still a dominant channel, which is growing by almost 42% a year in media spend. So I don't know how big your accounts are growing in Google shopping, but that's definitely uh, the number for the whole US market. And at the same time, if you look at the red line, you see that Google search uh, is declining by almost 9%. Okay, maybe this is no, no surprise for a lot of you guys, but there are some, for me especially, more interesting questions. How does it look like in Europe, especially in the duck region and the UK? And the question, is it still worth um, to invest in Google search? Um, and is Google Shopping always the better channel? Um, the next slides, guys, I want to give you some, some benchmarks. That's the reason why, why the session is named like this. And uh, for these benchmarks, uh, we picked 350 accounts out of the client portfolio. And uh, the, pre we, uh, the preconditions for these accounts to be part of this analysis uh, were, first of all, these accounts had to have um, at least one year of active comprehensive search, account, uh, search campaigns. Second of all, we uh, only looked at the non-brand search. So all brand-related uh, queries like, uh, for instance, Little Beeper, all the clients we have, they were not part of it because brand uh, queries are always performing a lot better than the non-brand and you can't really compare them to Google Shopping. 
Uh, second of all, we tried, uh, or third of all, we tried to really look at accounts where Google search is still a big amount of the media spend. So the media share had to be at least 35%. And at the same time, these 350 accounts had to have uh, active uh, Google Shopping campaigns also for at least one year. And now I want to give you some insights. The industries we are uh, we're looking at was fashion, consumer electronics, do-it-yourself, generalists, and sports and outdoors. What I will do now, guys, is uh, I want to start with uh, media share uh, analysis. So how big Google Shopping or how, how big Google Search still is. For me, this number is quite uh, impressive uh, because still, out of these 350 clients, Google Search almost has a parity with Google Shopping in, in ad spend which for me was quite surprising because I thought it is way more dominating for, for, um, with Google Shopping. Uh, but you can see that Google Shopping uh, was 52.0.6% and uh, search was almost there with 47%. So what you can see is out of these 350 accounts, the parity is more or less there. So search is still a big, big uh, player uh, regarding the ad spend. Then I want to share some average numbers regarding, um, from my perspective, very important KPIs. The first KPI, KPI, guys, is we had a look at an average conversion value generated by shopping on the left-hand side, which is the yellow bar, and on the right-hand side, there is always the Google search bar. And the average conversion value generated by Google <coughs> shopping was 37.8 higher than Google search. So probably no big surprise there. Nevertheless, the gap is very big. What we also had a look at uh, for these 350 accounts over a year on average was how many conversions Google Shopping created compared to Google Search. And you can see on the right hand side that absolute conversions, Google Shopping outperformed uh, Google Search by over 50%. What's very interesting, just a side note, the average order basket value was slightly higher with Google Search, which was for me pretty surprising because I thought it's the other way around. We also had a look at the absolute clicks generated by search and Google Shopping. And you can see there, absolute clicks, shopping just generated on average 33% more clicks compared to Google Shop at Google Search. And also clearly outperformed uh, Google Shopping campaign, uh, Google Search campaigns by 46% when it comes down to impressions. Um, we also had a look at the average click rate. And there, guys, I'm really interested maybe in the Q&A se session or afterwards. What was quite interesting is that the average click rate of all non-brand search campaigns was 46% higher compared to Google Shopping. This is probably the most astonishing fact out of the 350 accounts because I thought Google Shopping was lower funnel, the people know already what they want to buy, and it should be more obvious to, for them to click. At the end of the day, that's what we found out, and there's the first data who said, Christian, I don't give a bleep what your storyline is about. This was quite, quite interesting. Um, what's quite interesting, I thought the gap was bigger. Out of these 350 accounts, the average return on ad spend of shopping outperformed the search non-brand campaigns by almost 30%. For me, I thought it was even bigger because 30% seems like a manageable gap. Again, I would be highly interested uh, in your experiences, how big the gap is for your search, respectively your shopping campaigns. Based on this data, guys, um, we definitely can come to the conclusion that shopping is clearly outperforming, outperforming search, which at the end of the day is true. But what's very interesting, and two last KPIs before we try to go a level deeper, is the average CPC, shopping versus search, out of these 350 accounts, on average, the average CPC for search campaigns is almost 20% higher. Again, quite a surprising fact for me, because I thought since the media budget is shifted towards shopping, uh, with a daily basis, shopping is growing, the auctions are fuller. I thought that the average CPC for search campaigns is slightly decreasing and that, that there will be a point where the average CPC is more uh, affordable in search. But you can still see a pretty representative sample size that the average CPC for search, non-brand, is still more expensive than in Google Shopping. And the average conversion rate, guys, this is whopping. Average conversion rate for search campaigns for these 350 accounts was more than 40% lower compared to Google Shopping. This is the main reason why the return on ad spend for Google Shopping is just better than uh, search. So based on that, we could say, okay, case closed, Google Shopping is clearly outperforming search. What we try to do now, uh, guys, and by the way, um, the idea of uh, this approach um, is more or less rooted uh, to Martin, Martin Rutten, who is the founder of the idea of trying to really bid on skew or search career level. What we tried to find out, guys, is 
is shopping winning all the time? It doesn't matter if it's a generic search query or a product related one. Um, and we tried to find out and the results are pretty, pretty interesting. Um, what we did is guys, we developed a script uh, and we analyzed every keyword of the search campaigns and every search query of the shopping campaigns. And we tried to funnel them into four buckets. The first bucket is called search query keyword bucket digit. So we wanted to funnel every search query and every keyword where there's a digit in it. We did the same thing for every keyword and every search query, the second bucket, where there's an alphanumeric uh, code in it. You can see a, a, an example, Raspberry B, uh, Berry Pi 3. Then we had a third bucket, every search query and every keyword um, with a brand part in it, like Nike, Adidas, and so forth. And there was a fourth bucket, which is kind of everything else. And by doing that, guys, we tried to funnel search queries into product-related search queries and keywords and to brand-related search queries and keywords. And the last bucket is more or less the generic part. What I can say, guys, for the first three buckets, the product-related buckets or the brand-related buckets, so where keywords are brand-related or search queries are product-related and brand-related, you can clearly see that Google Shopping is still winning. Every single KPI, Google Shopping is the better channel. So what you can say is lower funnel, where the client already knows, either he knows the brand he's looking for or really the product he's looking for, Google Shopping is the better channel. But what about the fourth bucket? The fourth bucket where all the generic search queries and all the generic keywords are in it. What about that? And this is the result here, guys. And I want to share, or I would like you guys to really put focus on conversion rate, ROAS, and CPC. For generic search queries only, out of, these, out of these 350 accounts, the conversion rate for search was 10.5% higher, and the return on ad spend was almost 20% higher. This is quite astonishing. What does that mean? That in the upper funnel, where it's more about generic search queries, where the client doesn't really know yet what he wants to buy, search is still the better channel based on the data we have. We can discuss it afterwards because I think there might be some people in the room which see it completely different. But like I said, data is data. This was the first part. Let's move on. Text ads and shopping ads, keyword synergies. So first of all, I think it's quite a normal process that shopping gets bigger and bigger because on a return on ad spend level, it's, it's growing. No doubt about that. But I think there are pretty interesting ways, sorry. There are pretty interesting ways to use Google Shopping to leverage your Google search account. The idea or the concept is pretty simple. Uh, this is data we got from Google. On a daily basis, there are happening 525 million search queries on a daily basis, which has never happened before. So 525 million search queries are absolutely unique on a daily basis, which Google has never ever seen before. What is happening on a big scale I guarantee you guys, it's happening in your account on a daily basis as well. Every single day there are search queries which you have never ever thought about, which might be interesting and relevant for you. What we say or what we see is that especially our Google Shopping campaigns, since most of the retailers in here, I guess, are spending way more in Google Shopping than in Google Search, your Google Shopping campaigns are an absolute, highly relevant and profitable source for new keywords. We call them internally golden nuggets. And these new keywords are lying in the search query report of your Google Shopping campaigns. Every single day, search queries are logged into Google, your Google Shopping ads are triggered, and these search queries will lead to conversions. And I guarantee you guys that these search queries, there might be a lot of search queries which you, ever, you have never ever thought about and you're not covering yet in your keyword set. The idea is pretty simple. Either you do it manually or you use a script, which I provide afterwards, by the way, for free. Uh, or you have a tool which is capable of. Uh, the idea is pretty simple, that you're automatically, manually or semi-automatically extracting search queries out of your Google Shopping campaigns, which are profitable, which are relevant, and which you aren't already covering with a given keyword set. What we did, guys, is we tried to pick 50 pretty huge accounts, which are already using Google Shopping again, and they are pretty big in Google Search as well. What we did here is, um, we uh, implemented a script which filtered search queries out of the Google Shopping campaigns. And the filters were, we wanted every search query which gave the client at least one conversion the last 30 days. Um, and 
the word count had to be bigger than two, so we wanted to exclude very generic search queries. And we also implemented a, a rule which is only search queries out of the Google Shopping campaign should be extracted which are fitting the raw score of the client. On average, guys, these are the two bubbles. On average, these clients had an existing keyword set of 18,792 seed keywords, meaning they were cleaned by match types. What, what do I mean by that? If you have one keyword and three match types, we're not talking about three keywords, still about one keyword. So 18,000, almost 19,000 unique keywords. And the last 30 days alone, on average, out of the Google Shopping campaigns of these clients, 1,126 new search queries, which are matching all the filters, a conversion with the, with the approach for us, could have been extracted. And now what is very interesting, guys, is only 14.82% were already covered with the given keyword set. What does that mean? We are talking about only the last 30 days, on average, almost 1,000 new potential keywords can be extracted out of Google Shopping and you don't have it covered with the Google search campaigns. This is pretty big. Uh, the process looks like this. You have your, your product group or your ad group for the product, then you implement the filters. The script is filtering the search queries based on the filters you, you set. And at the end of the day, um, the search queries are put into a newly created ad group and the script is also creating an automated uh, new text ad for you. Um, this is pretty interesting, guys, and the script is provided on our uh, homepage. Um, the time box is not enough to go into deep into detail now. What I can tell you is, guys, either you use it for really creating the campaigns or just extracting the search queries, use it, because you will find hundreds of golden nuggets you can probably use for your search cam campaigns in a very efficient way. This was the second part. Then, trends and seasonality is about uh, and Black Friday uh, and holiday season. Uh, why we are trying to, to tackle that? A lot of clients are always asking us, are the Black Friday results good for us? Uh, what about other clients? Do they perform better? To be honest, a very tough question. What we try to do is, we try to bring some data to the surface um, based on 350 accounts again. Uh, in this case, we were only looking at Google Shopping. And what you can see there, I hope it's not, uh, you can read it properly. <laughs> Uh, on the x-axis, you can see conversion value, ROAS, conversion rate, ad spend, CTR, and CPC. Uh, the golden uh, um, um, bar, what is it, golden, help me out, English speaker, the... Golden bar. Golden, yeah, bar, okay. Die yeah. Säule, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, is uh, the Black Friday week from 20th to 27th, and the black one is the holiday season, November 1st to December 15th. And what we did is, the x-axis, so the 0%, is the average for a whole year for these 350 accounts. So you can read the first uh, stat, conversion value is, that on average, the Black Friday, the conversion value increased by almost 80%. For the holiday season, only 39%. ROAS, very interesting. Black Friday week jumped up on average by 33%. Holiday season, 11.24%. And then have a look at the conversion rate, guys. I know that in the Black Friday week, most of the people are really eager to buy, but I didn't expect that the conversion rate jumped more than 100%. And these are benchmarks, guys. Uh, take your time when you're going back from the SMX Munich and have a look at your campaigns. Just set the filter and look at your Black Friday week. What was the performance there? This is benchmark, this is average. Yeah? Sometimes it had to do with us, sometimes it was just a client effort, whatever. Just have a look at this. Um, ad spend was increasing between 25 and 30 percent. Uh, CTR slightly decreased for Black Friday week and holiday season. And the CPC, quite interesting, stayed more or less the same. I expected a way higher jump because I expected the people were investing a lot more. Um, yeah, these are the highlights of the return on ad spend. By the way, the annual average uh, return on ad spend of these 350 clients for Google Shopping was 6.05, and it jumped by 33% for the Black Friday and 11.24% uh, for the holiday season. And here is the conversion rate um, on average for Google Shopping, and here are the, uh, the jumps Black Friday and, hol and holiday season. Um, again, guys, benchmarks. The data doesn't care if it fits my or, or your storyline. Uh, maybe you just use it to really compare it with your performance. The last five minutes, guys, and I want to really be quick um, 
in, in case there are some questions. Um, shopping ads and CSS. CSS, everybody knows what CSS is. Everybody uses CSS probably when thinks about using it. Uh, I want to give you now uh, an insight uh, what the CSS actually did for our clients. And uh, what we did is, guys, we picked 100 key accounts. These key accounts spent in total in shopping uh, on a monthly basis 18.24 uh, million uh, in Google Shopping. Uh, in total, we're talking about almost 6 million products and almost 30 million clicks are generated. The industry is the same uh, compared to their first analysis. So quite a repres representative sample. Very important, guys. All of these Warner accounts are maxed out accounts. They just didn't manage to grow before CSS. No matter what they did, they had their lowest goal and they couldn't grow. They wanted to grow, they had to suffer from a better, from a worse rulers. That's it. Now CSS came in place and we decided together with the clients that we chose this setup. Meaning, we kept the GSE account and created a new account for the CSS program. A lot of clients, probably a lot of uh, uh, retailers here in the room will probably have a 100% reassignment just to CSS. We picked this account setup, so we're talking about two accounts. And this is the data, guys, uh, on average out of these wandering accounts. Again, a lot of data, and I shared a presentation anyway. But two things I really want to, 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 to stress. First of all, the return on ad spend, as you can see, the or orange point is more or less the average out of these wandering accounts, and the black dots are the outliers. The average return on ad spend more or less stayed the same for these accounts since joining CSS. Okay? But look at the conversion value and the impressions. The impressions almost doubled and the conversion value increased by 26.19%. And again, maybe we had something to do about it, but I think that the setup was the key because you had a second account where you just could increase your outreach and you could scale your efforts. Um, what's very interesting, guys, and uh, I want to share one last insight and then, then I'm done for today. Using this setup obviously enables big accounts to scale on the same rules level. A big reason for that, guys, is pretty simple because with that setup you can dominate auctions in a pretty unique way. Why? With this setup you can force somehow to create double impressions. If someone is looking with a generic search term, red dresses, um, Google is not very good at deduplicating this search query, which means having two accounts, CSS and GSE, it can happen that you are present with two ads, one with CSS and one with, with your GSE account, which is quite big because you have a, a double, you double your, your impression and your click uh, probability. And, what, and there is, by the way, guys, if you have that set up in place, there is a KPI in the auction insights which is called overlap rate. So Google exactly tells you how many times you had two impressions with your CSS and with your GSE. Pretty cool step. Please take a look at this because it's quite interesting if you chose this setup. And the last slide, guys, is uh, we picked top 20 accounts, the top 20, the biggest top 20 accounts, and we tried to find out what is the average overlap rate. And the average overlap rate for these 20 accounts is more than 20%. Can you imagine that? Every fifth impression, these accounts had two ads live, which is quite, quite a good thing most of the time. The charming lady already signaled me five minutes left, or only two minutes left, uh, and I don't want to eat up your time. Thank you very much for your time, guys. Um, conclusion and questions, I think we can move it afterwards. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the next talk, uh, and maybe we see us at our booth. Thank you, thank you very much, guys.